faith preacher. And uh, the A in his own pastor is an apostle. And the S in his pastor, when we say pastor, the S there is shepherd. And the T in that pastor is teacher. The teacher of the word. And the O that follows the T is an overseer. And the R in the pastor is revivalist. I'm introducing our Father and the Lord as I... Please rise up, rise up as we vote. Join hands together as we invite him to the podium. Pastor, prophet, apostle, shepherd, and on and on and on. You are welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Prophet, pastor. Praise the Lord. If you are ready for complete dominion around you, in your home, in our country, and everywhere you go, dominion. What are you? The Lord perform it in your life. We are here in Ogun State, Ogun State, Ogun Central, here in Abe Okota, the Alpha location. And I want to announce to the world that here there's going to be complete dominion flowing out of here to every part of the world in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, Chabel Kota Choir. We have complete dominion. And tonight it will start where? Tell me, tell me. It will start in your life. Why don't you raise up that hand? Father, we thank you today. We come to you with great expectation and faith that what you have done in the lives of other people all over the nations, everywhere, you will do it even at this time in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus Christ, Savior, Redeemer, Deliverer, we honor you, we adore you, and we praise you. And we're asking that your name will bring dominion to everyone here, everywhere, over the radio, over the television, social media, everywhere, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Glorify yourself. From this very day, and from this first event, first message, and first ministration, Lord, I pray you'll begin a great, unforgettable work in every life, even tonight, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We receive. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen before you sit down. God bless you. You can sit down. We're talking about dominion. Heaven only knows about dominion. And when God created man, the purpose of God, the plan of God, and what God wanted to see done on earth, in all generations, is for everyone to have dominion. And so God created man, and he put the stamp of dominion upon the man and upon the woman. Let me read it to you. We're looking at Genesis chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image you understand even from that before we read on that god a god of power a god of wonders a god of authority a god that has all things possible he said he wanted man not in a lower image 
He wanted man in his own image. Let us create man in our image after our likeness. You see the original intention and the original plan of God. And he says, and let them have. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth. Look at that. Over all the earth. God's man at creation was created that he will have dominion over all the earth. And then it says... And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 27 tells us, So God created man. As he said, as he planned, so he did. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him male and female created even that means then the man and the woman having the same image of god they were both in dominion and the plan of god is that they will bring up offsprings like them descendants like them children and their children and their children and their children all like them to have dominion until it gets to you that everyone on the face of the earth will have dominion and so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them look at verse 28 in verse 28, in verse 28, what he had said he would do, he actually did. And then he brought blessing upon them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Fill up the earth with people like you, having uh, dominion. I'm telling you, the original plan of God, original intention of God, original purpose of God, is that every one of the descendants of Adam and Eve will have dominion, be fruitful, and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. The world or any element in the world, the world was not to subdue man, subject man, dominate man. The man, the woman, you and I, you and your neighbor, you and every member of your family, everyone here, everyone there, all the people that are hearing my voice now, the original intention of God is that you will have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every, every, every living thing that moveth upon the earth. That is what you are talking about. Dominion. Creation in dominion. But then something happened. I'll tell you, I'll show you the story. Number one, created for dominion. Number two, corrupted. And they lost dominion then number three now christ came converted and the conversion brings us back to the original dominion that god had in mind and i pray today it will happen in your life 
I want to warn you. I want to sound a note of warning. There are people that come to meetings like this and they say, I'm already a Christian. Uh huh. We're talking about dominion. I'm already a church goer. I hear you. We're talking about dominion. I already hold the Bible in my hand. I hear you. We're talking about dominion. I already know everything they are talking about. I even brought somebody. God bless you, you brought somebody, but we're talking about dominion. And the dominion we're talking about, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, there is an area of your life. There is an area within you. There is an area of your personality where you do not have dominion. And tonight, the Lord will bring you out of that place you will come into dominion. Yes. Somebody there, I will come into dominion. It will happen. I said it will happen. And when that dominion is coming your way, you will not dodge. Answer me now. And that dominion tonight will not miss you in Jesus' name. I'm talking to you tonight on the promised dominion through faith in Christ. The promised dominion through faith in Christ. Three things we're talking about. Number one, the recipients of a decreed dominion at creation. Number two, the relinquishing of delegated dominion through corruption. Adam and Eve traded strength with defeat. Adam and Eve traded power with weakness. They let, they dropped, they gave away the dominion they had because corruption came in and they relinquished the delegated dominion that they had. Point number two, the relinquishing of delegated dominion through corruption. But thank God in Christ there's restoration. I said in Christ there is restoration. In Christ, there is renewal. In Christ, there is regeneration. In Christ, everything we lost through the fall of Adam and Eve, we're going to regain. And tonight, tonight, whatever you have lost, whatever you have missed, whatever has been taken away from you or stolen away from you a restoration is coming to your life tonight in jesus name yeah. number three the restoration of desired dominion by christ only christ can restore and give back to you what you have lost in Adam and Eve. One, the recipients of a decreed dominion at creation. Number two, the relinquishing of delegated dominion through corruption. Number three, the restoration of desired dominion by Christ. Look at number one here. Number one, the recipients of a decreed dominion at creation. I read it to you already in Genesis. The Lord created Adam and Eve. And he decreed that they will have dominion. That decree, nothing could have altered that. Nothing could have changed that until they missed their steps. And they subjected themselves to the suggestion of the serpent in Satan and the Satan in serpent. The old serpent were told at the time of creation in Psalm 8, reading from verse 6. Psalm 8, reading from verse 6, Thou madest him to have dominion. 
the psalmist thousands of years after creation look back into history and he said the almighty god thou thou the creator thou the originator and the maker of man you made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands thou hast put all things on thy feet let's recap a little bit at the time of creation the creation of adam the creation of eve and the intention of the Lord that all their descendants will have that same dominion. There was no sin, they had dominion. There was no sickness, they had dominion. There was no suffering, they had dominion. There was no subjection, subjection to any power, power of any man, power of Satan, power of the devil power of demons power of the powers of darkness they were not in subjection to even angels they were not in subjection to sin they were not in subjection to crime they were not in, in subjection to any evil power any evil habit of any man they were in authority they were in power they were in dominion and they were not in subjection to any form of sickness they were hale and hearty they were well they were strong and their brains their brains did not have any deficiency at all they were in dominion, complete dominion. And all the things we fight today, those things were not there because literally they had the nature of God, the image of God, the authority of God, the authority God had in heaven, they had that authority here on earth. They were completely fearless, confident, courageous, anything they wanted. They were men and women of decree. Whatever they decreed here on earth, it was confirmed in heaven. And God placed them in the garden, the garden of Eden, the garden of pleasure, the garden of of ease, the guardian of fruitfulness. That's what they what that's where they were. That's what they were. That's who they were. There was no need in their lives that heaven will not supply immediately. But then God gave the command to Adam and he said, You will keep this garden. Keep this garden. Keep this garden if adam had thought of that very well and had done that the way he should if he catch the garden you know, the serpent will not have that time or leisure or possibility of coming in before i go on your own garden your own life your own destiny your brain, your mind, your lifestyle, and the goodness of God that God has created you with. Keep your garden. Keep your garden. We have found that the descendants of Adam, they have done exactly as Adam had done. Adam did not keep the garden. And you, I can tell. Number one, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is carelessness. There is evil. There is neglect. That men and women today, they have not kept their garden the way God expected them to. And eventually, the serpent came and spoke and said, as 
God said he made the devil, Satan, made him to doubt, made Eve to doubt the word of God. Isn't that the same method he uses today as God said man should not sin? As God said man should not do evil? As God said man should be holy and righteous? As God said we must be overcomers all the time? He makes people to doubt. The word of God. As God said, we should live victoriously. As God said, we should be overcomers. As God said, we should have authority and dominion. And so he brings temptation. Adam and Eve, Eve and Adam fell into that temptation i'm sure you must have heard this story before and then god came in the cool of the day and said adam where are you the man is no more in the place of dominion adam where are you the man is no more in the place of authority adam where are you the man has left the image of god the likeness of God is taking up and taking on another image, another likeness. Adam, where are you? He had led the place and the position of dominion and authority. He said, I had your voice in the garden, but because I do not have your nature anymore. I do not have your likeness anymore. We cannot talk eye to eye anymore because I lost something. And I feel naked and ashamed. And there's no power. There's no authority. He could not stand. And God said, Adam. Have you eaten of the fruit? I told you not to. Yes or no? He didn't say yes. He didn't say no. He said, the woman, he passed the bog. He passed the blame. Looks like Adam has passed his nature of excuse making to everyone on earth. Did you do this? Yes or no? They will not answer like that. They will say, so and so made me do it. Did you get drunk? Yes or no? They won't answer like that. They made me drunk. Did you fight? Yes or no? They won't say yes or no. So and so originated it. Have you seen yes or no? They won't say yes or no. They will say everywhere around us is corrupt. And so the corruption made me do it. Are you pretending? Are you hypocritical? Yes or no? They won't answer yes or no. I'm trying to cover my face. And so excuses came and God drove the man and the woman out of the garden of Eden. Corruption came. Look at Job chapter 31. In Job chapter 31, I'm reading from verse 33. It says, if I covered my transgressions as Adam, if I covered my transgressions as Adam, transgression has come. Because of that, tragedy has come to man. Sin has come. Because of that, sickness, suffering 
has come to man. Iniquity, evil, has come in the life of man. Every man, every man. And the soul that sinneth, it shall die. There is the penalty, there is the punishment of sin that anyone commits. And especially when we cover it up. We cover it up with a plastic smile and we pretend we're happy and no sinner in reality is happy. His conscience condemns him. His neighbors condemn him. He condemns himself but he tries to make face and he tries to pretend he tries to act like a good man and he covers up his transgression his iniquity and his sin he is under condemnation the lord jesus said everyone that walks in darkness hates the light and this is the condemnation that light is come into this world but men and women love darkness rather than light that's the condemnation but today as you realize that the excuse making of adam and eve had passed into your life and instead of covering up with a smile, covering up with hypocrisy, covering up with whatever you're trying to do, you come out and you say, what I lost in Adam, I want to regain in Christ. New life will come to you. Yeah. I said new life will come to you. Yeah. Recovery, conversion, new life regeneration will come to you and the lost dominion you will have in jesus name job 31 33 says if i covered my transgressions as adam by hiding my iniquity in my bosom then verse 34 tells us did I fear a great multitude? He said, that that's something that makes people to cover up. Do I fear my classmates? Do I fear my neighbors? Do I fear religious people around me? Do I fear my friends? Do I fear the people that I thought I was an angel? And now they're going to discover, after all, he's not an angel. After all, she's not an angel. She's like a, she's a sinner, like everybody else. He says, did I fear a great multitude? Or did the contempt of families terrify me? The people that will say, ah now we see him now we see her and the thing has come out from the bag he was a hypocrite after all he was a drunkard after all he was an adulterer after all she was an adulteress after all and because of that they're not coming to Christ they want their lives to be private they cannot do like Zacchaeus that said in the open, Lord, if I have taken anything from any man by false assertion, I restore him for fools, and then half of my goods now I give to the poor. Compassion came upon him. Did the contempt of families terrify me that I kept silence? Catch silence. I pray that this night and all the nights of this crusade, when Christ is calling you and when he's bringing you to the Lord's dominion, 
you will not be quiet. You will not keep silent. And then that lost dominion you will regain in Jesus' name. He said that I kept silence and went not out of the door. What does that mean? Out of the door, there are people that lock themselves up. They lock the door. You cannot come in to them. Life, light cannot come into their dark dungeon. They lock up themselves in their darkness, in their sin. And the Lord is saying, behold, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, he comes to Christ and Christ comes to him. There are people at the day of opportunity when the Lord is saying, I am here, I'll save you. I'm here, I'll forgive you. I'm here, I'll set you free. Come out of that dungeon of darkness and come to the light for Christ. and they miss a great chance of having a dominion when Christ the giver of dominion is very near tonight you will not be like that say I will not be like that that leads me to point number two the relinquishing of delegated dominion through corruption. Adam compromised. He lost fellowship with God. Adam and Eve compromised. They lost the dominion, the authority. Adam and Eve compromised and they lost the garden, the garden of pleasure and peace and power and fulfillment and sufficiency. And then all their descendants, until it got to you, got to me, got to everyone, what they lost, we have lost. They relinquished, they delegated dominion that they had. And then they passed that loss to their own children. Genesis chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That's what happened to all those descendants of Adam and Eve. Everyone became, number one, evil. Number two, only evil. Number three, only evil continually. Number four, every imagination, every thought, every plan, every desire, and the path they took, well, the path of sinfulness and the path of evil. And that applies to everyone. Sin became the thought of the heart. Thoughts will lead to action. Sin became the action of everyone. Action will lead to habit. And sin became the habit of everyone. Habit will lead to character. And sin, evil, became the character of everyone. And the character would lead to destiny. And destiny now is undesirable destiny. And if you look at your life, every evil thing you have done, every sin you have committed, 
every thought that led you in the wrong direction started with a thought. That's why God said, my thought is not your thought. When God created Adam and Eve, the same image, in his likeness, their thought was like the thought of God. But now they lost that dominion and they lost it to corruption. And now your thought and the thought of evil. God has the thought of holiness and the thought of righteousness and the thought of purity and the thought of dominion over every evil action. But man talking about you, woman talking about you, we lost that thought of God. And now we became unrighteous. We became sinful. And our sin and our unrighteousness condemns us. And our love for evil, our love for darkness, our love for sinfulness brought condemnation upon every heart and every life. But now, as we turn to the Lord, He, Christ, is the only one that can bring back that dominion and that power. But you must be plain. You mustn't do like Adam did, covering up your sin, Covering up your evil imagination. Look at verse 11. Genesis chapter 6 verse 11. The earth also was corrupt before God. And of course, God condemns corruption. Christ condemns corruption. Why would he die for our sin? Why would he die for our corruption? Why would he die for the evil we have done if he didn't condemn corruption and sin and evil? The punishment we should have borne. He bore for us. And when we realize and we turn, when we realize and we run away, from that evil, when we realize and we say, Lord, I look at my life, the dominion over sin, the dominion over evil, the dominion over corruption that should have been there. That dominion has been lost. But now I come in sorrow. I come in repentance because my conscience condemns me. My habit condemns me. My lifestyle condemns me. But Lord, I come. I come for forgiveness. He will forgive you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It will turn your life around. Yeah. And the condemnation we inherited from Adam and Eve, the blood of Jesus, and the sacrifice of Jesus will take that condemnation and corruption away in Jesus' name. The earth also was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. God condemns violence. He condemns fighting. He condemns strife. Man beating the wife, the wife being wicked to the husband, God condemns that. If we are the nature of God, the nature of God is love. The nature of God is helpfulness. We'll help one another. We'll love one another. It is the nature of falling Adam that brings violence and strife into our lives. But as we come 
to Christ. That evil nature, fighting nature, violent nature, oppressive nature, wicked nature, the Lord will take away from us. And then in verse 12, it says, And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. Can we point a accusing finger to that generation? Without looking at our own generation, the time we live in our communities, in our families, in our local government, and even in religious circles, the violence, the corruption, the evil, the stealing, the drunkenness, and the family violence and oppression. God hates that anywhere it's found. Whatever name we're called, however religious we might be, if there is sin, God hates sin. If there is evil, God hates evil. If there is hypocrisy hiding under religion, you will be going to the best church in town. If violence, strife, fighting, drunkenness, stealing, corruption, crime, if that is in our lives, the Lord hates it, the Lord condemns it, but he wants us to turn. And it's only when we turn, and when we turn to the Lord, that is forgiveness will come. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh, all flesh had corrupted his way were responsible. It's what we have done that makes us evil. Satan cannot force evil on anyone. Your neighbor cannot force sin on you. Whatever we have done, don't let us act like Adam. The woman, you gave me, she gave me the fruit, and I ate. That did not spare him from judgment. But as we come, and as we tell the Lord, and we say, Lord, I am the guilty one. I'm the offending man. I'm the offending woman. I am the one that did the evil. Then God will have mercy on us. Because we repent, there's mercy waiting for you today. If you repent, if you call upon the Lord, if you say, Lord, I am the guilty one, and I want your mercy, that mercy will come. That forgiveness will come. If we're not pretending and thinking, my being religious, protects me. Uh -uh. Religion does not protect anyone if that one has not turned away from sin, has not turned away from evil. It is in the repentance. It is in the turning away from evil that then the mercy of God will come upon our lives. We're looking at Psalm 53, and I'm reading from verse 1. Psalm 53, we're looking at verse 1. It says, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. What that simply means is the people that do evil, they act as if God will not see me. God will not take note of what I do. God does not mind anymore. He's such an indulgent God now. He does not condemn evil anymore. Those people that do evil, and they're not thinking, God sees me. God knows me. God knows my... Where I go, they are corrupt, corrupt are they. 
and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. That's it. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God because there is none that doeth good. Look at verse 2. It says in verse 2, God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there be any, if there were any that did understand that did seek God. Verse 3 tells us, it says every one of them is gone back. They are all together become filthy. Look at your life. Don't hide like Adam. Don't cover up like Adam. Filthy language. Filthy appearance. Filthy lifestyle. Filthy drinking. Feel the action. We've lost the dominion. That man does not have dominion anymore over all those filthy lifestyles. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. But thank God, as we come to the Lord in total repentance, as we come to the Lord saying, Lord, I come. He has forgiveness for every repentant person. Say amen. Yes. He has mercy for every repentant person. Say amen. Yes. And as God is calling you, he's not calling us to a life of corruption. I love you. I love your corruption. Never. It's not calling us to a life of sinfulness. I love you. I love your sin. Never. He hates every sin. He condemns every sin. But the sinner who will repent, who will say, Lord, I know. Lord, I understand. Your purer eyes than to behold iniquity. I come in repentance and I want you in my life. Mercy will come to you tonight. Forgiveness will come to you tonight. And Life will turn around and the dominion you lost. You will have that dominion tonight in Jesus' name. I could even say a greater amen than that one. Let's look at it now. We're looking at point number three. Point number three, the restoration. Somebody help me shout restoration. If you're going to have restoration tonight, shout it aloud, restoration. If there is anything God is looking for, he's looking for an opportunity in your life that everything you lost in Adam, he will restore that to you tonight. Dominion over sin. Give me a good amen. Dominion over sickness. Good me. Give me a good amen. And dominion over suffering. Give me a good amen and dominion over subjection the subjection under the power of the enemy the lord will bring you out tonight in jesus name uh, look at isaiah chapter 26 and i'm reading from verse 13 isaiah chapter 26 verse 13 O lord our god other lords beside thee have had dominion over us. Look at that language. Hear that declaration. O Lord, our Creator. O Lord, our God. O Lord, our Redeemer. Other lords beside thee have had dominion over us. Think about your life. Do like Job said, I will not hide my sin under a cover. O oh Lord, our God, other Lord survived dominion over us. Alcohol has had dominion over some people. Immorality has had dominion over some people. And corruption, stealing 
whether they are stealing government money or stealing their neighbor's money, stealing you know, has had dominion over some people. And for some people, covetousness has had dominion over them. Oh Lord, our God, all the lords beside thee, little hell, lost, has had dominion over them. Little hell, lying, has had dominion over them. Little hell. Lasciviousness has had dominion over them. O oh Lord, our God, if we're sincere like that, and we come to the Lord with open heart and with sincerity, and we say, This we know, all oh, that Lord have had dominion over us, but we want to turn around, but want to have total repentance, but we're looking for restoration, but by thee only we will make mention of thy name. Those are the people that are asking for a change of life, a change of heart, and they want to have the original dominion that God created Adam and Eve with. Tonight, you can have that original dominion. Amen. Tonight. Somebody shout, tonight. God is a God of power. As he had power on the day of creation, he still has power on all his creatures, even at this time. And if you say, Lord, here am I, no pretense, here am I, no covering up, here am I, and there is uh, no hypocrisy. I come, it will forgive you. It will change your life. It will turn everything around. And then uh, he'll give you the dominion everyone in Christ ought to have. How does that happen? Acts chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 19. Acts chapter 3, repent ye therefore. You want dominion? Repent ye therefore. You want a new life? Repent ye therefore. And you want authority over every evil sin in life? Repent ye therefore and be converted. Let me remind you three things again. Number one, created for dominion. Number two, corrupted, losing dominion. Number three, converted, now to have and to regain dominion. Tonight, there'll be dominion over sin. Tonight, there'll be dominion over sickness. Tonight, there'll be dominion over every satanic attack and satanic affliction in Jesus' name. Complete, complete, complete. The people will come and they say, Lord, I'm coming. Lord, I'm coming. And as you have said, repent ye therefore. You want authority, power, dominion, and you want total freedom. Therefore, if that's what you want, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. It will take the cleaner, the melting, the eraser from heaven, it will wipe away all your sin. That they will not be remembered against you anymore. Tonight, the power of heaven will come to you and then we look at that evil sin that you have done, the lies you have told, the violence in your hand, the fighting in your life, the evil nature in your life. It will come and with the power of heaven, it will wipe everything away in Jesus' name. That's what he's expecting to do. That's what he loves to do. And that's what he plans to do for everyone that will look at their lives 
And the Lord is asking them, where art thou? Today is not Adam, it's you. Where art thou? Where are you? Where do you stand? And where are you living? What's that evil thing in your hand? And as you come and say, Lord, here I am. I've gone astray, but I want to return to the path of rectitude, relationship with the Lord. The Lord tonight will have mercy upon your life in Jesus' name. It says, repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. He will do it. I said, he will do it. Now, that is the number one glorious, wonderful thing the Lord wants to do. He wants you to have his nature of righteousness again. His nature of righteousness and purity again. Because he doesn't want sins in our lives. He wants his nature to be in us. He wants his image to be in us. That it will come. And then he'll blot out your sins when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. The time of renewal, the time of remission of sin, the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord tonight. I said tonight. I said tonight. Where are you? It will happen. It will take your sins away. It will forgive your sin. It will cleanse your sin. It will change your life. It will write your name in the book of life in heaven. And when your name enters that book of life in heaven, dominion comes, victory comes, triumph comes, power over every evil will come in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, it tells us, Acts chapter 3, verse 26. It says, unto you first, God, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you. He will bless you tonight. He will bless me tonight. I said he will bless me tonight. He sent Jesus, his son, to bless you in turning away. Look at that. In turning away, in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Tonight is your night. As you trust in the Lord, as you believe in the Lord, salvation will come. As you believe in the Lord, dominion will come in your life again in Jesus' name. And every evil thing that has dominated your life, oppressed your life, and almost driven you into doing evil, the Lord will break the power of sin out of your life tonight in Jesus name are you there where are you you will not give excuse I say where are you you will not pretend like Adam I said where are you you will not cover up like Adam I say where are you the Lord bless you tonight the Lord forgive you tonight the Lord change your life tonight and the Lord grant you the dominion you lost in Adam tonight in Jesus name it's bowed and eyes closed it's bowed and eyes closed for anyone everyone that will be sincere tonight and will say yes I understand the dominion I lost in Adam with Adam but I'm coming back I repent 
I turn from my sin. I turn from my evil. And tonight, I watch the forgiveness and the freedom of the Lord. Wherever you are, heads bowed and eyes closed, just raise up your hand in all sincerity. Lord, I turn. Lord, I repent. Lord, I want you in my life. Lord, I've been weak. And all those evil things in society, they have had 